Hey there. Okay. It's good to see all of you. I got myself confused. You did. It <laughs> well, happened. welcome to Wednesday Night Live. It's Hello. great to see all of you. And Elsie, we agree with you. You need a dog. So we're trying to talk Gabe <laughs> into getting you a dog. Um, but it's great to see everybody. It is. Yeah. Emma Harmon's here with us. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> so we don't have Julie tonight. I hate to no. tell you all, she um, she got some food poisoning after last week's shepherd's pie. No, so she didn't. Recovery from that. You can't lie to people all like right, that. Right, no, the that. real reason I'm here is if you watched last week, you know that I became victorious in our Kahoot game. And so therefore my prize was that I got to be the co-host. So does that mean whoever wins tonight has to be here live next week? Uh, is that, is that how that's gonna I work? don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I don't think. I don't know. But are you I'm playing the game excited. tonight? We are playing the game tonight. So awesome. that's a good reminder. If you haven't already, make sure you have another device available so that we can play Kahoot together at the end of our time together today. Um, and so you'll want to go to Kahoot.it on whatever device that is, or you can download the Kahoot app. And then once it comes time, we'll put the QR code up on the screen and the pin number up on the screen so that you can join us for that fun game. It's a good time for sure. And then make sure, I, I can't remember if you said this or not, but make sure you've got a separate device, yep, right? Yeah, separate device. Uh, don't try to play it with the device you have. Yep. Um, and just a reminder, what we're doing here, the whole point of this thing is that we're coming together uh, as a family, but we're doing it virtually, right, mm -hmm. from our homes. Uh, but but that you're, you're cooking together as a family, yep. you're spending time together, uh, uh, we're talking about the topics on Sunday mornings that we've been discussing over this Lent series. And then when you sit down to share your meal, just know that, that you're sitting down at the same time as everyone else uh, cool. that's doing this. And yeah. that you'll discuss as a family, you know, what are the cornerstones of your faith and your family. And so it's, I think it's really been a really cool thing. Yeah, it's super awesome. Um, so here, as we kind of gear up and get ready to go uh, with our, our cooking this evening, uh, what are we making again, Emma? What we're is making it? sheet pan fajita. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And so these are the things that you're going to you're going to want to have at the ready. And so you're going to want to get out those peppers and uh, the onion. Uh, you're also going to want to have that sweet potato ready to go. And uh, then you've got some spices there with you. Uh, Julie said she didn't include salt and pepper, so you might want to grab that, make sure that's ready. Also, one key ingredient that she did not include because we didn't have enough containers to do it uh, was oil. And so you want to make sure you've got some oil um, ready to go. And then uh, some of the things you're going to be using are measuring spoons. You're going to need a bowl. You're going to need a couple of sheet pans. And then you're also going to want to pr start preheating your oven now to what's the temperature? 375. There you go. Let's do it. Yes. This is the fifth week already. I can't, it's and crazy. You know what, I'm super excited about tonight because we are making something easy and delicious and it is sheet pan fajitas. Ooh. Yeah, it's gonna be so good. Sheet pan fajitas? Sheet pan fajitas. Well, we need to get sheet into pan. the fiesta mode, if you will. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's oh. make some oh. sheet pan fajitas. Oh. Let's go. It's not Taco Tuesday, it's sheet pan fajitas. Okay, I'm down. <laughs> but you can have this on Taco Tuesdays. All right, well, I don't know if I can do this with a serious face, but that's okay because cooking can be fun. And we're gonna start out with a knife. Um, and as we saw okay. last week, you need a little bit more practice with that. So <clears throat> the first thing is let's let's cut up the peppers. So we got some festive looking peppers here. And they are yeah. very festive. <clears throat> Do you know <clears throat> that they're, they're all the same kind of pepper except that they're on the vine longer? Are you serious? I, I think That's so. what changes the color yeah. or whatever? The longer they're How sitting long? in right. So which one is the longest? This is the youngest. And this is the oldest. Well, then let's start with the baby. All right, start with the baby. Okay, so I'm going to show you something really fun. A lot of people um, just really don't think that there is an actual way to cut a pepper. They just cut it and then, you know, slice it up. But you can actually core the pepper really easily by cutting <clears throat> around the core like that. Hmm. And so hmm. there's your core. You're done. And you want to get the... the um, Seeds the seeds there. and things out because you don't need them for this recipe. And then you're going to slice them without chopping your finger off into nice little slices like that. Like, so a, like you, long ways, right? Yep. <clears throat> and you're going to put them right on the pan. So if you want to move them out of your way, you can do that. Okay. I think you got it. Jim, 
I, I am so impressed that you brought this hat with you because it really Listen, just makes it fun. We I, are we need cooking. We it super fun, and this definitely does it. <clears throat> Do you like fajitas? I love fajitas. So, so when easy. I worked at a local restaurant, yeah. they used to talk about how, um, like we would sell fajitas like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, I like believe one it. would come out and then everybody was wanting to order fajitas right. and they would say it was the sizzle that sells it. Yeah, because sounds. you come, yeah, you come walking through the restaurant with the, uh, that noise going and yep. the smell. It and smells oh, it's so, so, good. so good, right? Yeah, so this is really easy. And we're gonna actually make chicken fajitas and sweet potato fajitas. And the, the reason why- Sweet potato I know, fajita? it sounds so weird, but the reason why sweet potato really starts out of- what's the, what's the oldest? This is the oldest. All right. Yeah, all right. So you're gonna cut around the core. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's good. No, but the reason why sweet potatoes is because my oldest daughter, Jessica, she's vegan. And she is so great at being vegan. Do you know what vegan is? No, I've always wondered what the difference between vegan and vegetarian yes. is. Yes, vegan is no animal product at all. So we are not making vegan fajitas. But if you are vegan, you just don't use the chicken in this case or the meat, whatever kind of meat you're choosing. And a great substitute for that is sweet potato. So I thought it would be hmm. fun to introduce people to the idea of using uh, sweet potato in their fajita. If you don't like sweet potato, you don't have to put it in. Not a big deal, but it's really good. You'd be surprised. So we're gonna add sweet potato into it, our fajita as well. That and if you're good. vegan, you just don't add the chicken. Um, and you could do this with beef strips too. You don't have to do it with chicken, but t we're gonna try to do this on the healthier side. And, and Probably use. Good anyway. Yeah, this is actually a pretty healthy, um, inexpensive, Fast meal to make, unless you add a lot of guacamole. Do you like guacamole? No. Okay. I am not a big guacamole okay. fan. Well, but they say that guacamole is good for it you. It is so good for you. And it's so good. Why don't you like guacamole? I think it's the texture oh. and the look what? and the taste. The texture is so good. It's super smooth and delicious. It's so good. This one has all sorts of seeds in it. Yeah, you're going to have to kick those out. You don't want those. You don't want the... Um, I can't think of what this is. There are seeds there's there's a name. The ribs. The ribs. That's right. The ribs of the pepper. I knew there was a name for it, but it just wasn't coming to me. And okay. Ribs. You're doing great. Thanks. I'm feeling a little bit better with your knife skills. Have you been practicing? I have. Yeah. I have. That's one of the beautiful things about this whole process we've been doing yeah. is it's inspired me to be a little more focused on cooking. Yeah. You know, other days it's of the week. It's easier than you think. I think some of the hard part is just thinking, okay, what am I going to have? And that's why they always tell you to plan ahead for a meal. You know, because if you're planning ahead, then you know when you get home, these are the things I'm going to make. Hmm. And the, actually, grocery stores are really great these days because they prep like a lot that. of things for you. Sometimes you can even buy pre um, sliced peppers so you don't even have to do this process. But it's cheaper to buy them and slice them yourself, so that's why we're doing it this way. Plus, you get to practice using the knife. Very good, very good. Okay, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna add an onion to it. That's onion away. Yeah, I know, you love cutting onions, right? Okay, yes. but we're not gonna dice the onions today. We are going to slice the onions, which is a lot easier. Um, I always cut off the one end. And I leave this end until, this is the, the harder end, the end that's into the stem or what, if, what have you. And, and so it just kind of holds the onion together until you're done. But we don't want the um, outer layer on. We're going to cut it in half. Notice how my fingers are out of the way. <laughs> and uh, you were taking the skin off, but sometimes I just even take the first layer off. Um, okay. I don't know if other people do that or not, but I just I, it just makes getting the skin off easier. Okay. But you're going to like cutting the onion today because it's super easy. We're just slicing it. Oh, we're not doing it like we did no, last week. No, no. And okay. then you can do, like I said, you keep the knife on the cutting board and you rock it. You keep your knuckles there so you don't get your fingers, right? And see how when you have this piece there, it, kinda it helps. just holds it together, right? Oh. So you're going to pop those under that. Okay. Do I break them up or just throw yeah, them on there? Yeah, break them up. Mm -hmm. Let me just, so that we can see what's oh, happening Oh, it's so here. pretty, yeah. 
I love the colors. It does. No. It looks. It's it, like a party it's on the tree. It's fun. It's fun. That's the way I like it. Okay. Uh, Slice. So Slice now away. I'm forgetting what you did. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You got it. Nice. Oop. Oops. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. I'll just, here, I'll get this one. Oop. <laughs> there we go. This is fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, add the rest because you want oh, you want a lot. Because what happens is when these are roasting in the oven, they shrink down, and so even though that looks like a lot right now, it may not by the time it's done cooking be as much. Okay, so now we're gonna add the sweet potato, and you want to wash it on the outside, and then we're gonna cut the ends off like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the best way to do it is to cut it in half like this, right? And that way, uh, you can leave the skin on. Uh, you can peel it, but I think the skin actually makes it nicer. It tastes better. And we're gonna make strips. And because it's roasting with um, other vegetables, to help with even cooking, you kind of want them to kind of match in thickness to what's there, right? And we're kind of making fry shapes. Well, so nice long strips okay. like that. Oops, go ahead. These can go in there. Yep, you can add them right in. So, is this easy so far? So far, I think this is the so hardest part of the whole dish right here. Good. Cutting these. <laughs> oh, with the knife. That was that's yeah. Not they're easy. they're um, a pretty solid piece of vegetable, so you do have to kind of be careful when you're cutting, um, but. They are delicious. Ah! That is like yeah, Okay, that one's good. <laughs> this one's okay? Well, we're gonna, hold on a what? second, stop. What? There, try it. This way? Yeah. Watch your finger, there you go. Okay. Perfect. And then I would cut these like in half like that. Yeah. Like this? Right, yeah. yeah. This is not easy to cut. Yeah. Okay. All right, so put them all in. What about these? Should we do these too? Yeah, if you want. Perfect. Good. This guy, I'm determined to cook him. Okay. Because he just seems. Yeah, he wants to be a I part like of the him. fun. He yeah. likes the, he wants to spice it up. Yes. Which reminds me, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to spice it up. And the key ingredients are Cumin, I think that this is what makes a fajita taste like a fajita, is the cumin. And then you've got chili powder, and believe it or not, Italian seasoning. Really? Yep. Salt and pepper. Okay. Salt and pepper. All right, so we're gonna make the spice mix. All right. We're gonna make the spice mix. And you need, uh, let's get a bowl. And your okay. measuring spoons, which right here. We're gonna put a tablespoon of cumin, which is this, to the bowl. Oh, I didn't open it. Didn't know it wasn't open. And a tablespoon of chili powder, and then a teaspoon of um, Italian seasoning. Okay. So a tablespoon, you yeah. said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to season all of the vegetables. Okay. Though. And then. A teaspoon. A teaspoon a of that. A teaspoon of this. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. What was this one? That's a tablespoon. Of chili powder? Yep. Mm -hmm. This one's cold. It's um, chili powder. Might have been against something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I totally fell for that. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Some pepper. Oh, yeah. I was like, it might have been up against something cold. How did your, like, when you were doing it, I it know. was, like, making noise. I know. Okay, here's it. Oh, I'm turning the wrong thing. What were you turning? I was turning this. 
Oh. Ah. I don't know why that would make a difference. Let me I try don't it. know. That's, I want to do it weird. your way. I, I don't know if it makes a difference either, I but it, like it just sounds better when you do it that things. way. Okay. All right. So a teaspoon. Nice. Yep. That, that's part of the festivities. A teaspoon of salt. You're going to mix it all together. With, with any of those spoons, you okay. just mix it. Yeah. You've made the fajita seasoning. All right. <clears throat> All right. And now what do I do? Um, actually, the last thing is the chicken. You're going to add the chicken onto the pan. We just throw it in there? You just add, well, this is. Oh, it's already cut. It's already cut. I I, it if, like, you do, if you want, if you just buy the chicken breast, you can cut it into strips. But uh, I, thought, if, I thought it was like full chicken. Oh bread. yeah! yeah if I is. gave you the meal kit, then you'll have them cut because it just saves. This time. really is cold. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, it, uh, the chili powder was up against something cold, but you were saying a joke. I should have known. So, all yeah, right. Let's um, let's do this. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. These don't feel like I feel like they should be thinner. No, they shouldn't be. Um. Than that. You could I mean, cut them like more. Massive. Would you not put that on your? You just put hmm. one piece on your fajita if you want, or you could make oh. them thinner. I mean, it's up to you. You're the one eating it. You want to cut them? No, no. no okay. Fine. So you're gonna put um, a couple tablespoons of oil all over it. You're okay. gonna use your hands here in a minute, but um, you can eyeball it too. What, however you want to do it. Why don't you go ahead and? Uh, right. I so feel like gonna, last time I overdid it. Yeah. So you get a nice sprinkle of that. And then you're going to sprinkle this over the top, and then you're going to get your hands in and mix it all up together. Okay. You're going to mix it all. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. But it helps if Oops. you, you know, even it out in this part of the process so that it's... Evenly distributed. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. All right, now use your hands. Get them dirty. Mix them up. So just... Yeah. Now, of course, if you're vegan, you wouldn't add the chicken to this. You would just do the sweet potatoes and vegetables. But at this point, we're going to go well, all this in. This is meh say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This looks great. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right. There, nice. So it's, you want to make sure everything is flavored, you know, so. But I think it'll be good. Does it smell like fajitas to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I feel like it does. Not yet. I, oh, I mean okay. it in a disrespectful okay. way. I feel like it does. I feel like the. <laughs> I, was just being I feel like the cumin and the chili powder to me just automatically smell like. That. I don't know, but I, yeah, I feel like I can smell it. Oh, but. Yeah. So and then okay, all you do is you pop it in the oven for 30 minutes or so until the chicken and the vegetables are all cooked up and roasted, wow. and then I'll show you what to do next. Now, if you. Um, have never done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. We just want you to know that it's okay. Don't don't be chicken. You can do this. On that note, we will see you back in a few minutes. I'm going to show you how to make sticker doodle cookies. Yeah. And uh, until then, we have something that will delight delight you. The end. I don't know what to say. I guess I'm thinking the word. Y'all, I need you to know that the Pastor Jim Burlow does laugh at his own jokes during these segments out loud. Look, if, if somebody's got to laugh at him, right? I mean, oh my laugh. goodness gracious! Hey, if you're still working on cutting up your veggies or getting your chicken or putting everything in your in your sheet pans, it's totally okay. Take your time. Do whatever you need to do. Time? Who did I just turn into? Where? I'm like from the south now. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> take your time. You got plenty of it. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit while we're waiting here. But I also wanted to remind you, or maybe let you know, that you have a couple of sheet pans there because most likely your sheet pan fajitas are gonna cook better if you put them on two different sheet pans. So um, just wanted to help you out with that real quick. Yeah. And then uh, and when when you get it all done, right? Mm -hmm. You go ahead and just put it in the oven. And it, it don't don't stress. You don't have to rush or whatever. But uh, you know, just you know, when when you're finished and you got your oven preheating, just uh, put that in there, and you'll want to have it cooking for 30 minutes, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Also, make sure you wash your hands after because you did just touch raw chicken too. So that's a good make point. Make sure you do that. Um, 
You know, Jim, I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed your message this past week on Sunday. And one of the parts of the message that really stood out to me was the story that you shared about that time that you went to the church service and kind of experienced maybe the pastor seeming a little bit hypocritical and inauthentic. Um, and just kind of that uh, actions and heart place not normal, not being in the right space. And that story was interesting to me because it reminded me of an experience that I also had. Um, and I was like, are you telling my story? <laughs> but um, I went to this really big mega church one time, and it's a pretty famous one, and I was really excited to go. But kind of the whole time, I didn't really feel like it was super authentic. Um, and that kind of uh, upset me in some ways, but also then a very similar thing happened at the end where they were mm. kind of, the pastor was like, all right, so if you've been moved today, you know, everybody close your eyes. If you've been moved today, raise your hand, you know, and it was a very large space. And so it's possible that there were people that raised their hands, but I also did the same thing and peaked a little bit and I didn't really see very many yet. It was like this big production of it. And I don't know, for me, that's just that feels hard and inauthentic when those actions don't line up with what we're kind of called to be like as right, Christians. Right, right. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, uh, you know, that, that story, it almost feels like it, 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 it I don't know, I, I struggled with it because I was like, I don't know if it really is... Uh, saying what I what I'm trying to say in the sermon, yeah. but uh, but it almost seems like you know the pastor's actions did reflect what was in the pastor's heart, just maybe not the the right thing in the mm. pastor's heart, right? Yeah. And uh, and and so uh, in some ways it's the inverse of what we're talking about mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. on a you know a negative side of things. But really, um, you know, we we think about these things and they uh, these actions and these words reflecting what's happening in our heart. And uh, I just want to be sure that we're not understanding these things as being the thing that earns us Christ's grace, right? Right. Um, that's not what this is about, and it's not about uh, really even uh, our witness. A lot of times we feel like these are the things that we do to mm. evangelize to others and to show others Christ. You got to show your faith, all of that. Right, yeah. right, right. And that, that, you know, that's there in Scripture and everything, but that's mm-hmm. not what Paul's addressing here. Mm-hmm. Paul is speaking into this thing, this debate that the Israelites and the Gentiles are having because they've got this new emerging faith. Mm. And so for the Israelites and, and the Gentiles, they're trying to figure out okay well well, what does it mean to be part of this club like how do people know if we've if we join the club if we're in the community right yeah and so the Israelites are saying hey we you know we've started this thing Mm -hmm. and and uh and we've got these laws that we follow um I didn't go into it too much on Sunday but one of the things uh was a marker of being a part of this community was was circumcision Mm. and the Israelites are like this is this is what you got to do so you can imagine the Gentiles are like yeah no thanks we'll skip that right and the Gentiles are saying hey it's all we got to do is just proclaim that we believe that we say that we believe and then we're a part of the club and uh, and so Paul is trying to say to them hey look it's it's neither one of these things exclusively Mm -hmm. that really what is the marker of joining the club if you will is is what happens in your heart Mm. that that's where it begins yep and then the things that we do and the things that we say outflow from this transformation that happens in here but it happens in here first before anything else yeah and it's so, I'm sorry, it's that, it's that word evidence. Yeah. It, that, that is what it is, that, that, that people find and see evidence of what's happened in here through our words and our actions. Right, and I feel like it's got to be continued evidence. Like, yeah. it's not just like this one and done thing where it's like, yeah, let me go do this thing, take a picture of it, I'm done, I'm a good Christian. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it kind of reminds me, um, you know, of, of mission trips, right? Because a lot of people will go on mission trips and it's this act of like, I care about my faith, I care about this community, like I want to I wanna take this step, do this thing, and they go, they have a great week where, you know, they're putting all these good actions forward, expressing their faith. They take the pictures, they put them on social media, they proclaim like, hey, I'm a Christian, look at all the good that I did. And then they come back home and maybe nothing about them has changed, or maybe they go back to habits that weren't so good or don't necessarily express Christ's love into the world. Right, right. right. And it's like, our, it's, it's similar to this of like, if we're continuing to learn to live like Christ, then it's we've got to continue to have our actions match that. Right, right, yeah, and uh, um, I love this this 
tail end of the of what we read on Sunday mm-hmm. it, it speaks to that. So so Paul starts asking all these questions like, well, how are we supposed to believe if we don't hear about it, or how right. are we supposed to r- r- you know see Christ if if people aren't living out and embodying what what Christ was about and what Christ did? And uh, in verse fourteen, he says, how are we to hear without someone to proclaim him? Hmm. And and the Greek word for proclaim is caruso, mm-hmm. and uh, and and so what he's alluding to. It's it's a, an image of this role that this official would have that worked for, let's say, like the king, right? And and if the king was going to travel to a town, he, the king would send this official ahead of ahead of him to yeah. uh, to go into the town and to announce that the king is coming. Oh. And this wouldn't be like a casual thing, you know. This would be a very like performative, like you know, the king will be here on this day. We announce to you, and right, and right. and it was basically proclaiming that yeah. the king was coming, right? Yeah. But what Paul uses with Caruso, it's got this like nuance to it. It's a difference. It's not just posting your pictures on Facebook and saying, hey, look, this is where I went and this is what I did. It, it's, it's, it's embodying the truth of what's happening in the heart. So it's sure. more kind of like preaching yep. than proclaiming. Yep. And, and Paul is saying that, that we too announce to the world that the king is coming. Mm. And so the question is, how do our words and our actions do that very thing? Mm. That's, that's really good. And I feel like that's so much for us to think about and continue to put into our everyday life. That's awesome. So at this point, hopefully you have finished up chopping up your veggies and putting your chicken, putting your sheet pan fajitas in the oven. We're going to go ahead and get started on what I think is going to be the sweetest part of the meal. <laughs> get it? But um, we're going to make those snickerdoodle cookies. So you're going to want to make sure that you've got a cookie sheet, um, that you have a Another bowl. cookie sheet. Another cookie sheet. Oh, man. Another we're we're up to three cookie sheets Woo! now. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got that. You've got a bowl. Um, you're going to want to take out that cookie dough that you've got. And then um, you're going to want cinnamon sugar. So if you picked up a kit from here at church, um, you're going to have the cinnamon and sugar combined already in your kit. But if you're using your own ingredients at home, you'll need both cinnamon and sugar, or maybe even sugar substitute if that is what you're doing. So I um, want to make sure you grab all of those, but yeah, yeah. These, are called, these are called snickerdoodles. Snickerdoodles are one but of I was, my favorite. I was really disappointed because at no point did we have any Snickers. It was like, it's just the doodle. Or doodles. Did we, you doodle on them? We No, <laughs> I didn't. All right. Well, I was disappointed. This is disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the disappointing sticker doodles. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. Okay, so the fajitas are cooking, so it smells really good, right? And we are going to make the dessert, and it's super easy. And I, I've said this before, but one of the things that you can do that makes it feel really special is maybe add a dessert, or like we did the wedge salad last week, and we just did something simple but took a little more time and intentionality to it and that makes it special so we're gonna make snickerdoodle cookies snickerdoodle have you ever had snickerdoodle cookies i'm sure i have at some point but i can definitely say i've never made do you know what they are dessert i mean do you know what snickerdoodle cookies are like what flavor are they it's like chocolate and peanuts and no. tofu no. and tofu I don't know. I'm no it actually I it's no cinnamon idea. sugar cookies awesome. and they're just i feel like they just go really well with this meal the cinnamon flavor so it's super easy you of course could make a fresh batch of cookies from scratch but we are in the middle of the week here and we want to simplify things and the best way to do that is from the already pre-made cookies. So these are the sugar cookies. Um, You can get them in the aisle that sells the the milk and the sour cream and all of that. They they usually always have them there. I just like how it says eat or bake. Yeah, you can eat it. That's hysterical. It's because people like (laughs) cookie dough. Do you like cookie dough? A a lot of cookie dough. So this is how easy it is. We are going to make the cinnamon sugar and then we're gonna roll the cookies in and put them on the cookie sheet and then bake them off. Let's do this. Yeah, all right, so we need Two ingredients, sugar and cinnamon. So you're gonna put a cup of sugar into your bowl there. A cup? What's a cup? I already this, measured it. Oh, uh, so is this pre-measured? Yeah, I So I can just that. do the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. Why okay. wouldn't we just put the cinnamon here? And no, mix it well, up? we could do that. Let's do that. That's great. So we're gonna put a tablespoon of cinnamon into the cup of sugar. 
We're actually going to use the bowl, but we can definitely mix it in. Okay, so That's zip it. it up. Yeah. Do you like cinnamon? Mm-hmm. I do. Have you ever made cinnamon sugar before? Yeah. Yeah. I used to you make can it for my it. kids for like toast. I would do like cinnamon oh, yeah. sugar toast. Yeah. Can I shake it up? Yeah, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Ooh, you did so good. All right. Nice. Okay, that makes me scared. All right. Put it in the bowl now. The reason you want it in the bowl, <laughs> put it in the bowl. Put it in the bowl. Okay. And the reason for that is because we're going to roll these dough pieces. And it'll just be easier. Although, I guess you could do the shake and bake uh, thing. <clears throat> but look, it's already pre-sectioned off, right? And so you're going to just take the piece and you're going to roll it in the sugar and you're going to... Is that eat or bake? I know. You could, is it good? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good. So you're going to just roll it in and put it on the bake. You're doing great. Yeah. Do you want to take a good work. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You gonna eat that? I think so. Huh. Good. So you go through the whole entire batch, and then you're gonna follow the package instructions on the back for baking. And because the fajitas are in right now, you don't need to get this in the oven. In fact, um, I would wait until after you're done eating to bake the cookies because it only takes eight to ten minutes and you don't want to burn them and you might lose track. And that way you can have hot cookies right out of the oven. They also smell really good when you're making them. Have you ever baked cookies at all in your house? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I make cookies every Christmas. So you know, oh yeah? Do you make sugar cookies at Christmas? No. What kind of cookies do you make? Chocolate chip. Oh. Oreo chocolate chip. Ooh, that sounds good. Peanut butter chocolate chip. Nice. Dark chocolate chocolate chip. Okay. You make a lot of cookies. Not all in one year. Yeah. Do you? Oh. <laughs> do you buy pre-made dough and then you just bake them off, or do you actually no, mix I make them it? Out? Oh, I am impressed. That's pretty good. So then, um, the other thing that we have on our menu is confetti corn, and honestly, mm. I, I say, you know, you can make confetti corn because basically it just has peppers and um, corn in it, and it makes it look festive. Mm -hmm. You can make it easy. You would saute up the peppers and onions and corn all together. But here's the cool thing. They actually make confetti corn and you just buy a bag of confetti corn. In. See, I knew we were having a celebration. Yeah. We're gonna have confetti. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah, it's like, it's like food confetti. So This is awesome. Yeah, no, I know. And it, it makes the sugar cookies different. You know what I mean? So they're not sugar cookies, they're actually snickerdoodles and they're so good. But um, I don't know if you've ever looked through the frozen vegetables in the vegetable aisle, have you ever done that? They have so many varieties, but it's called Southwestern corn. I call it confetti corn because it has the different colors in it. And so you just, right when your fajitas are almost done, you're gonna pop it in the oven and cook it according to the package directions. And then you're gonna have the fajitas and the corn, and you're gonna have a, a pizza. Feast. Yeah, feast. <laughs> so, anyway, so these are gonna go in the oven after your meal, and let's get back to Wednesday Night Live. Yes. Confetti corn, confetti corn. I've never <laughs> heard it called that, and I'm kind of excited about it. But hey, speaking of that, um, as we said in the video, you probably want to wait a little bit, cook it right as you're pulling out your sheet pan fajitas, just, did I say it right? Yeah. I think I did. Okay, and then um, you can just pop the, the bag in the microwave and pull it out when you're ready to eat. Yeah, just follow the instructions yeah. in the bag, yeah. Awesome. And if you don't want to eat the confetti corn, you can always like use that as a celebratory addition to the, to the table, right? Like, yeah, confetti corn. Oh, and <laughs> you could just put it on your table, is that what you said? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good time though to make sure that you set your table. Ah, good point, yeah, that's right, that's right. So make sure you get everything in place, uh, get that table ready to go. Everybody have a fun so far? 
Hi, Everybody yeah. enjoying themselves and getting this dinner all squared away. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, I had fun this week, so I got a chance to sit down and talk with Reverend Bobby Jones. And Aww. if you don't know Bobby, you know Bobby, right? She is awesome. She, she is, is so cool. awesome. And she, uh, she's a, a member of our church. Actually, uh, um, she's now recently moved uh, up to North Florida. Mm. And so it was really sad to, to see her leave. Yeah. Um, but it was so good to reconnect with her the power and to of talk technology. about this. That's right. It was awesome. And, and I got to tell you, so, so if you don't know Bobby Jones, she, um, she served in the church uh, as a missionary for, mm -hmm. for her career. And uh, it, it, she's just got incredible stories, an incredible heart. Uh, she traveled to Taiwan, to Korea. She worked with volunteers in mission. She uh, drew or dug wells in Sierra Leone. She worked with UMCOR going to Brazil and Egypt and the Jordan and, and Russia. And so, I mean, she's just been all over. That's amazing. And it is so cool because uh, it's perfect that she's talking about this topic tonight of, of us embodying what mm. happens in our heart through yeah. our words and our actions. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that, um, that, she, uh, that I asked her, you know, what she thought about was the, the phrase that Paul uses about how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Mm. And uh, I can't wait for you to hear what she, what she said says about this idea of our feet being beautiful. And so let's let's hear I'm from excited. Reverend Bobby. This has sort of been uh, a favorite passage of mine. When I was much younger, <laughs> much, much younger, <laughs> I was never one of the pretty kids, but I used to get complimented quite a bit on my hands and my feet. My relatives used to say I had such beautiful hands and feet, I could easily go to New York and become a hand model or a foot model. <laughs> so I was always very conscious about my hands and feet. But then grandma stepped in and grandma was always one to um, burst one's bubble, so to speak. <laughs> and she said, beauty is as beauty does. And that really made me stop and think, what good is it to be beautiful unless something is accomplished? It's not in the looks, but in the does. Beautiful feet are beautiful because they bear good news. And of course, to me, that took me right back to the feet of Jesus. And Jesus traveled the Holy Land up and down, back and forth, and his feet were bearing good news uh, to the people of Israel. And of course, there are several mentions of Jesus' feet throughout uh, the Gospels in terms of women in particular recognizing his feet and bathing them with their tears or their hair. Uh, and then, of course, uh, during his final days, he's washing the feet of his disciples who were going to be, they didn't know it yet, but they were going to be commissioned to be bearers of good news. Uh, what is beautiful in this life in terms of the world's interpretation of beauty is so different from what Paul is talking about and his meaning of beauty. Uh, Paul was uh, going back to Isaiah, uh, who was speaking of beautiful feet on the mountains, carrying good news of freedom. And so uh, the beautiful feet, in my mind, is just such a great example of um, what Paul was trying to deliver in his message. Does anything come to mind for you in your travels and your experiences where you saw transformation occurring in the heart uh, that then bore fruit in the world through actions and words? Uh, one of the things that that humbled me most it had to do with one of my students when I was teaching. Uh, I taught in a girls' school in Taiwan. 
the girls there lived a very different kind of life than anything we can imagine in terms of a rigid structure and they were totally lacking in freedom by our western standards at least in terms of their their life and their lifestyle but uh, after I left Taiwan and was assigned to Korea I happened to meet up with one of the girls in the airport in Japan as I was on a stopover on my way to Korea and she ran up to me in the airport oh Miss Jones Miss Jones uh, you have totally changed my life and I was just dumbfounded I had no idea what just one's presence can mean to someone and the fact that I had gone to her country and given time to teach uh, young girls in their school uh, meant so much to me that she had decided to give her life to doing something similar and wow I mean what can one say to that other than thank God for um, allowing my life uh, to be a witness in that way. I certainly never expected such uh, a response. And yet, we often don't know. It's very humbling because we often don't know what kind of impact our life has on other people. Our willingness to step out of our comfort zone. Uh, I mean, I was a, a country girl from Pennsylvania who had never traveled anywhere and to be pushed by God into doing things that were totally, I'd never been on an airplane, I'd never gone anywhere. Uh, and yet, if we're willing to step out when the challenge is in front of us, who knows what kind of impact that can be. I'm sure Paul never imagined that we today would be talking about him <laughs> a world away from where he was and yet he stepped out and his own feet were very beautiful in terms of what they did in spreading the good news and I've seen so many uh, beautiful feet and they were often deformed with abuse and walking and when I thought about uh, the feet of Jesus and all of his walking that he did and uh, the hot weather and the dirt and all that those feet went through in order to share good news with his own people. Uh, it's very inspirational to me to think that he gave his life to do that. And then he washed other people's feet in order to prepare them for their sharing of his good news. Pretty cool, isn't it? She is awesome. <laughs> she is so Such great awesome. stories. She was talking. I asked her, I said, what was the, um, like in all those places that you traveled and everything, was there anything that was common, you know, mm. a commonality that you yeah. found? And it was, I, I was thinking she was going to say something about the people she encountered, but she actually answered uh, something about God. And what it was, was uh, she said uh, the first word was trust. Mm. And she said that That's all of these so different good. places I went, um, She's like, I'm stepping into a new experience. I don't have the answers in terms of how this whole thing's going to play out, where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And she said the very first person she met on her first trip, uh, it was someone that like received her uh, where she arrived. I think it might have been on her way to Taiwan. It was like a connecting flight, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and the person happened to know her parents wow. and had lived near her parents oh. uh, years prior. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing how God works. <laughs> yeah, and she it? said, like, she was insane. like, it was just confirmation after confirmation. Yep, that yep. Uh, when we stay faithful to God and in trust, when we kind of put ourselves out there, God's going to use that to to touch and impact lives around that's us. Good. Super cool, isn't that's it? That's really good. <laughs> um, one of the other things that's really good is that we've got this 
uh, theologian in our midst. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Yeah, I know him. You probably know him quite well, I, right? I know him. Yeah. Like, know him. You though. actually, like, have talked to him in person? I have, like, every Sunday night. You are so lucky. I really am. Oh, my gosh. So should we hear from him? Because this theologian is going to break down for us what could be a very complicated and confusing theological concept that we're talking about. I'm ready. And just lays it out for us. Let's do it. Yeah, so let's uh, let's welcome the Dr. Reverend esteemed <laughs> Caden Stockdale. Our actions and our words should reflect the transformation in our heart. There we have it. There we have it, folks. Thank you. <laughs> so much. That was amazing. It was, it was awesome. awesome. It was awesome. Yep. Oh my gosh. So where, where should everybody be at this point in their meal? Should the, should the chicken be in the oven, Emma? Yeah, chicken should definitely be in the oven. The, the sheet pan fajita should be in the oven, but maybe it's a good time to check it, see how everything's going. Yeah, see, see if your, your chicken's doing okay. Um, I'll be honest, I cannot remember at what point you put the cookies in. Uh, I, I'm sure Julie said that at some point, but uh, I don't know. Put the cookies in at some point. You really shouldn't trust either of us to help you with cooking, <laughs> so I don't know. And then, uh, and then the the confetti corn, like you want to yeah. heat that up before, before you're going to you eat, yep. but you don't need to do it too far in advance, right. or else it'll get cold, right? Right, so, exactly, exactly. So you might want to do that. Um, what are we doing now? I'm lost. It's cahoot time. That's right. It's kahoot time. Kahoot. Don't be jumping off the thing at this point. Hang with us. And if you haven't played, if you've been with us every week, but you've skipped the Kahoot thing, would you just come on come and join on. the game tonight? Join our Let's game. get a lot of players playing this it's Kahoot game. It's going to be tonight. so fun. It's Kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T.it, or it's the app, right? Yep. You can download the Kahoot app, or you could even just scan this QR code. So yes. if you're using a phone or something like that as your second device to play the game, just go ahead and open up your camera, and you can scan the QR code and it should bring you right to our right game. Right to our game. And then you're going to put in the PIN number, which you see before you. What wow. is that PIN number, Emma? It is 958 Six six eight three. That is right. What a what a great number that is. Nine five eight six six eight three. Hey, we've got some people jumping on. Four. Oh, somebody says I want a dog. <laughs> I bet it's your kids. I bet Elsie's uh, playing this. That would be fascinating if Elsie was the one that was actually like hitting the buttons. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, but Elsie we've got. Is is like two. We've got a uh, we've work. who's cool dad? I want to I want to know. Somebody uh somebody is um, a really cool dad. I don't is that I don't know. That's Anne? the Erpeldings. I, I, I think that's the I don't know. Ah, yeah, gotcha. I think that's it's great. Got the Egan family that's jumped on. The hoops. Um, the hoops. Oh man, this is going to be a competitive okay, bunch this evening. Now, I mean, we did we did say I won it last week. I'm not playing this week, so you guys have a better chance. You're welcome. Oh my, that sounds like the gauntlet has been thrown. I think we are ready to play this game. Dr. Stockdale's on. Oh, we are all in trouble now. Let's go. Let's do it. Everybody ready? I'm ready. All right. When this is going to be exciting. Five. Here we go. Uh, the proof is in the what? In what? The pie? Uh, the pudding. The sausage? Or the pot that you put the pudding mm. in, the pie in, yep, yep. the sausage in. Hmm. Mm, interesting. I, I, know, I feel Emma, like this is think? kind of a trick question. Maybe, maybe not. I'm if wondering. If you were listening closely. Let's see here. Oh, oh it's the, the pudding. pudding. Of course uh, it's the pudding. And uh, look at that. I want a dog. Is on top. Oh, come on. LC. All right. Here we go. Sweet potatoes can be put in fajitas. True or false? Hmm. True or false? I feel like we've answered this question this like very have. evening. Have we not? I feel like we have. And but were they listening? There oh, it they is. Were. It Way is true. It is true. Sweet potatoes can be put in fajitas. All right. I want a dog. I want a dog. Is keeping it at the top. Here we go. All right, right, this one is type your answers in. Woo! Who is our cornerstone, folks? Who type it into the thing. Who, who is, our, is cornerstone? our cornerstone? Notice it says who. So that, that means it's a it's person. It's a person, not and a person. So place you or just thing. type in your answer who is our cornerstone? Not where. I think in, in, not the, what? In, this, in this little endeavor here, 
It's two people. It's it's Aaron and Gabe. They That's are our co our cornerstone. They are for holding sure. holding down the technical floor. Jesus Christ! Jesus wow, Christ! Wow! Yeah! Woo! Way to go, you guys! That's you guys awesome. did awesome. Ooh, Ooh the good. hoops are sneaking up. And the Egan family is on fire. Ooh, yes, they are. All right. Who is the author of the book of Romans? Is it God? Is it Jesus? Maybe it's Paul? Or Peter. Hmm. Mm. Uh, you Let's know, it, it's interesting because theologically speaking, you could say that God is the author of all of the books in the Bible. I mean, you could say that. I think some do say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that could be All right, be, let's uh, find out. Could be What's an answer. the answer? But no. It's Paul. <laughs> it it is. is Paul. You guys, you're so good. This is this is crazy. Is this I want a dog. Is killing it. How did the Gentiles think they received righteousness? Asking nicely for it. Telling another person. Verbally professing their faith. Or winning a Kahoot quiz. Ooh. Hmm. Did that they have Kahoot back in the uh, very fun biblical back days? In the biblical days. <laughs> You know, I think Paul would have been really good at Kahoot. Probably, honestly. They could have used, you know, paper, tablet. <laughs> it's true. All right, verbally professing their faith. That yes. is the awesome. answer. Oh, okay. man, the Egan family this jumped up to This is a close it, game. It really is. All right, our next question. How did the Israelites believe they received mm. righteousness? It was taking a class, clearly. Observing the law? No, actually, I, I think it, I remember reading, it was holding a meeting. <laughs> I think that Doing was... Doing what uh, Moses said. If it was holding a meeting, that would be a Methodist That's what uh, I was going to say. to do things. <laughs> observing uh, the law. Observing the yes, law. Good job. That was good. All right. Oh, man. Come on, everybody. I want a dog. Hang with one it. To beat. What Old Testament character does Paul mention in chapter 10? Oh, Noah? Mm, Jonah, I think. Moses? Or Daniel? Ooh, this is going to be for the ones who really were listening closely on I'm Sunday. glad I'm not playing today. This might be, this might be a, uh, <laughs> a lead-changing answer here. I am unsure. Moses is the right wow. answer. Oh, wow, that is impressive. Wow. <laughs> what a dog is just holding on to the lead. Rocking it. Oh, a multi yes! These are my favorite ones. What was Sunday's children's story Bible point? Was it call on Jesus? Walk the talk? Set an example. Or snickerdoodles rock. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say Snick the rock really loud. Snickerdoodle. Yeah, if it's in caps, yeah. that means you're yelling, right? Exactly. So snickerdoodles rock. rock. Uh, Hope we're really obnoxious for you. This, um... Let's see. This, this. Okay. Oh. okay. See, what, it, what is it It's here? all of them. It was all of them. All right. Cool. Okay. I love it. All right. Let's see. How many questions are in this quiz? Hmm. All right. I wonder. Was it 10? Not enough. Is it too many? Or is it 15? <laughs> Depends. I don't know. Hmm. hmm. How many questions are in this quiz? Oh. 15 is the correct These answer. Are too good. I feel like it was like there in front of our face the I whole time. I feel like it was. The Egan family's got nine correct. That's impressive. In a row. That is impressive. How can you tell when someone has received Christ's grace in their heart? That's a short answer. They are laughing. Tears are present. They tell you. <laughs> their words and actions match what they say they believe. There should be a fifth answer. They make the heart shape with their hand. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, look, people were listening. They were paying, yes. Good job, y'all. Words and actions, that's good stuff awesome. right there. Awesome. All right, make 11th me question. In chapter 10, Paul says that the Lord is the Lord of who? The Israelites. Clearly just the Gentiles. Everyone? Just Moses and Moses alone? That's it, just Moses. Wow. Okay. I'm going to mosey on over to that answer. <laughs> Everyone, Everyone is Woo! definitely Good job, the correct yep. answer. I'm seeing. <gasps> oh, oh, no. It's Zick takes Woo! the lead. All right. What does Paul reference when he uses the phrase beautiful feet? We've had our feet washed by Jesus. Some feet look better than others. Sharing the good news with others. There is no such thing as beautiful feet. <laughs> In my household, that would be true. Yikes. Yeah. Yikesies. That's it. Sharing nice. the good news with others. Let's see. Where are we? Oh, oh so close. Oh, my 
my goodness. So this is close. better than the national championship game the other day. What but is the key ingredient that makes a cookie into a snicker doodle? Cinnamon sugar. Clearly, it's chocolate chips. M&M's. I think it could be cherries, though. Ooh, I've never had a cherry cookie. That sounds delicious. Cherry cookies are awesome. Have you ever had one? Yes. Oh. Hmm, but not in a snicker doodle. True, true. Oh, you just gave it away. Cinnamon All right. sugar. Cinnamon sugar. <laughs> That's the okay. right answer. <gasps> oh! Oh, oh, man. <laughs> Zick Woo. is holding on All tight. Right. Where do we find righteousness? Through Paul. Through Christ. Through Adam and Eve. Through the Bible. Now, come on. That's not fair. That's not fair. The, I, I don't know here. Like, I'm stressing. How, how, like, specific do you think the answer is? Oh, it's through, through Christ. Christ. There you go. Wow. Makes sense. That is, uh, that was almost like a trick question. Was. Zick is holding on to the lead. Holy mackerel. Oh my goodness, and this is the last question. What was the main point of this past week's message? No our pressure. Our words and actions should align with our heart. The proof doesn't need to be in the pudding. Raise your hand if you love Jesus. Salvation comes through saying you believe. Oh. Ooh, what was, was the main point? What was it? What did Dr. Stockdale tell us? That's true, he gave us the answer. I hope he gives it right. Mm. Yes, Our good words job. and actions should align with what we believe. Coming Third in at place. number three. I want a, I want dog. a dog place. Woo! That was exciting. Hoops. The way hoops to go. are in second. And who's going to be co hosting next week? <laughs> who's sick? sick? We don't know. We don't you know. better reach out to us and let us know. We want to know Especially who you are. Especially because we want to give you your, your, your prize. actual prize. Yeah, the real prize. So, yeah. uh, Zick, hey, congrats. Come on, everybody. Go. This was fun tonight. Super fun. Oh, fantastic. Oh, my goodness. That. And did you realize? Jim, next Wednesday is the last Wednesday Night Live. You're kidding. We're already here oh because gosh. next Sunday is Easter. Not this Sunday. But the one after next that. Next Sunday. Holy mackerel. I know. Lent has flown by. It, it honestly has. So if you haven't registered already for next Wednesday, you are not going to want to miss this. It's going to be an amazing meal. It's going to be an amazing Wednesday Night Live time or, you know, fellowship together. Yeah. So make sure you register. You can go to our website um, at peaceorlando.org um, and you can click on the Wednesday Night Live button and join us there. <laughs> um, or you can go to our church center app and you can register there as well. But you got to register by Friday so yes. we can get all of those um, materials sorted together. Right. And because it's Holy Week, we are going over the top it's gonna be awesome. with this meal. And so uh, it's going to be a roasted pork loin. And so I want to challenge you all to oh, make this a, a, an event meal next week. Don't just kind of throw it together while you're rushing through your busy week. It's Holy Week. So I think it's worthwhile of committing to taking some time, sitting down together, making this meal, maybe even dress up a little bit. And, Ooh, uh, you know, kind of get ready for this special occasion. It, 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 it's a, and it's send a, us your pictures. Yes, please send us your pictures <gasps> so we can see you Do you know what they this. should do? What's that? Your family should send us a waving video of you sitting around your table. Please do that. Please do that. Please. Zick, we need you. <laughs> Make it happen. That would be awesome. That would be great. That yeah. would be great. And so uh, we we have had so much fun, and we know that you're probably ready to eat. Yeah. Uh, maybe your food is done in the oven, and you're pulling it out. Maybe you're getting the corn ready. Maybe you're launching in and enjoying those snickerdoodles. But yeah. we're just going to ask that you kind of pause for a moment, whatever yeah. it is that you're doing. And uh, let's join in a, in, a, in a blessing and a prayer tonight together as a family. And so if you would, pray with me, please. Good and gracious God, we thank you for uh, the joy of being together mm. and the joy of preparing a meal because just in the act of doing this, we feel closer to one another and if we're really paying attention, we feel closer to you in the midst of this. And so God, as we uh, uh, prepare to, to, to share this, this meal that we've worked on together as one, or as maybe we uh, enjoy our desserts, or maybe we're kind of cleaning up because we've already eaten and we're getting ready to, to go to bed or finish for the evening, uh, would you please bless each and every one of us, mm. bless uh, the, the families that are gathered together, bless Peace Church as one body of Christ united together. That we seek to serve you. We seek to, 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 to model you. Most importantly, we want others to find evidence of your grace in our hearts 
through our words and our actions. And so may we live that out in these coming days. For we bless you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for the blessing of this meal. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope you have a great week. And, Absolutely. Uh, hope we'll to see you on Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday. And if not on Sunday, then next Wednesday night. Enjoy your meal, everybody. Bon appetit. I want to dog, dog, dog.